What's up Leafs fans? Welcome back to Leafs Digest. Now, there's not too big of news. I saw this actually come out last night. I was reading reports from the score. The Leafs, it started with a report that the Leafs have interest in a goalie who is currently playing for the Barry Colts. He has drawn interest from many other teams in the NHL, but it wasn't that significant of news. It's not anything we'd come on here and say, oh my God, I can't believe the Toronto Maple Leafs are up to this. They're looking at this guy. It's typical for teams, especially around this time of year, to go and look at undrafted free agents and try to lock them up before they can get to the summer, give them some offers, have them show uh, some time where they can look around and see some other teams and maybe pick your team as the best. But what subsequently followed that report was a report from Jeff Merrick of Sportsnet that said that Peter Mrazek has drawn interest from other teams around the NHL. They have been calling Kyle Dubas. They've been letting him know that they have interest in Peter Mrazek if the Leafs decide to move on from him. Now, this is huge news for Toronto for the salary cap situation here and for what we've been seeing recently, especially coming off of what happened last night and kind of considering how critical you and I are. We can't take this single game by single game and say, oh my God, we got to trade this guy based on last night. But with that in mind, how big of this is how big of news is this to you, Goody, considering that he's a guy that we've been questioning kind of from day one, going, is this gonna be worth it? Three point eight million dollars for a guy who's twenty nine years old, he's three year deal, he's got this year and two more after this one. For teams to be coming and calling uh, at, and saying they're interested in him, regardless of if the Leafs have officially said, Hey, this guy's on our trade block, it, it's it's pretty interesting that other teams would take a look and want want to see what uh what they would have to give up to be able to acquire a guy like that. Yeah, it's weird timing just because of our comments. We've been pretty critical of him, even though we did get the win. Uh, we already do know what he's capable of. He's not a bad goaltender. He's just taking his time to settle in in Toronto. But I will admit that contract does not look good. We're paying a lot, and there's a lot of term there. So I, I am a little bit shocked to hear that uh, teams are actively looking into this. I could see it a bit more if he was a rental player, but you're going to need to live with that for the next three seasons, as you're saying. So it is a little bit uh, peculiar, but at the same time, I am happy to hear that there's interest there because the Leafs are cap pressed. So at the end of the day, even if we don't get a great return, I think our team could benefit greatly by offloading a little bit of cap space here with Mrazek. And I trust Wall. I really like that kid. I know we haven't seen a ton of him yet, but I like what I've seen. And if he's just in a very limited backup role, I mean, about as limited as a backup role can be for a young kid, then I'm okay with that. Or at least it feels all right. What are your initial uh, impressions of what's going on right now in the trade block? Well, the thing is that I, I kind of feel like it's one of those times where you'd be selling low on Mrazic, which scares me a little bit because I don't think he's an exceptional goaltender by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't think he's as bad as his numbers have been right now. With that being said, it's one of those kind of... <sighs> up and down situations where you look at it on one side and you go, okay, other teams are calling us. He's not playing that well for us. There's no promise that he's able to turn this around for us this year, next year, the year after that. There is no promise. There's no guarantee. You don't really know what he could turn out to be. We have a hope. We have an imagination of what he should or could be, but we don't know for sure. So if teams are calling in year one saying, we'll take $3.8 million off of your cap hit, this year, next year, and the year after that, you're, go you're a team that's going for a run, you're looking for some salary space, you're trying to acquire a guy who's going to make significant impact, probably on the defensive end, we can soak $3.8 million from the cap. That is exciting to me. That is something that I look at and go, I think this should be looked into more. I think this is something that should be expanded upon and gone, okay, how can we take advantage of this? And the other thing I look at is, Yes, you're right. We haven't seen much of Wall, but in contrast to what Mrazek has done this season, let's just look at their games played and how they performed with the Leafs this season. Peter Mrazek, six games played so far. He has a 3.2 goals against average, 8.96 save percentage, which is not good by any means. Obviously, I've mentioned his salary cap, and he's a 29-year-old goaltender. Joseph Wall, on the other hand, it's not like Mrazek has completely outplayed him by number of games. Wall is sitting at four games played this season with a 2.76 GAA, which is better than Mrazic's com comparing this 2.76 to the 3.2, and a 911 save percentage, which not incredible numbers, but when you're looking at a backup guy who's playing in long road trips, back-to-backs, tired teams in front of him, sometimes they don't have all the confidence in the world with a backup going in there, especially coming off a guy like Jack Campbell who's playing as well as he is, I don't know that it's that significant of a downgrade to go and rely on Wall to be just a backup because especially at this point, we thought Mrazek was going to be tandem guy. He's proven at this point, and Wall uh, Campbell, excuse me, has proven 
he's not looking to be a tandem guy. He wants to be the starter. So he needs a backup behind him. I think that this could be a good opportunity to move on and free some cap space up here. Yeah, it is definitely. And my one question is if we do that, yeah. uh, and like, God forbid, I'll knock on wood for everyone who's superstitious watching this video, but like, it's let's say Jack Campbell can't play through the playoffs, something happens. Uh, does that spell up the end of our season? Like, I, I mean, unless we get a miraculous run from Joseph Wall, which to be honest, I'll never rule out. Like, how many times have we seen a rookie goaltender come in and do something special in the playoffs? I mean, Bennington, Matt Bennington, Murray, yeah. the list goes on. I mean, it's a hot, cold position. And if you can get a guy who's hot and feeling good about himself, then, you know, you can take that pretty far. But I also do worry about, you know, the outlook of your team after you lose a Jack Campbell. Because you're right, he's been rock solid. So would that spell real realistically the end of true contention this year? I really, I can't say for certain, uh, but the one thing that I do take comfort in is you got to get rid of some cap space. And even if you do end up trading away Peter Mrazek, realistically, we don't have, maybe I'm uh, out of pocket saying this, but I don't think we have an overwhelming amount of rental players this year. I know, I think Kosh is a one-year deal, right? So that's kind an of tough RFA, to deal though. with. An RFA, okay, exactly. So there's some redeemers here. So, and I don't want Leafs to be like, oh, he's already making excuses for scrapping the season. But I'm saying, if you get rid of Peter Mrazek, and it ends up, you know, Jack Campbell gets hurt or whatever, God forbid. I get it. It's going to be tough to think of ourselves as contenders this year, but our team will still get experience and probably won't change much into next year. And then you can address the backup uh, goaltender situation in the off season. So I, I think that even if the worst case scenario happens after you trade Mrazek, you still kind of win in the long run. I mean, well, here's my question to you though. Okay. On that, mm -hmm. if Campbell goes down right now and Mrazek has to be the guy to step up, do you have faith that this season is, is able to continue as is with Mrazek being the guy? Like if you just eliminate Campbell and you got to keep yeah. Mrazek, like, you know, something happened today, then I think I could still keep a little bit of faith because Mrazek, I mean, you know, goaltenders can be a little bit of late bloomers. And I'm not saying he's going to turn into like a top three goalie out of nowhere. And we don't need a top three goalie. Realistically, we're a good team some nights we need one but that's like any group and um i think that i wouldn't write off the season even in that situation because if you throw wall in there with mrazic and they kind of feed off of each other and just you know gauge who's the hottest on big nights then i feel like you could still get by that way but if you trade away obviously like mrazic and then campbell gets hurt like for all of this to fall on joseph wall like i just i don't know if you could do that situation mrazic and wall i think you could still bring yourself into contention but Mrazek obviously needs to be a little bit more solid. But to his credit, um, I think he's used to, I mean, he was a bit of a tandem last year too, but he hasn't really got tandem minutes anyhow. So he hasn't really had a lot of time to settle in with this new team. Yeah, that's fair enough. I think though my concern would come that, yeah, okay, Mrazek has experience. He's played in the playoffs, but it's not like he's done it. Like he's not taken it to the next level. And where it also comes into concern for me is this guy could just get injured. And if you keep that guy around, you take up almost $4 million of cap space for a guy who could get injured, could continue to play as poorly as he is, and just be equivalent or worse than what Joseph Wall was when he came up here. You're losing an opportunity to go out and acquire a guy or add a guy to this team who could truly put you over the next level. A guy that could hold you over until Campbell is able to come back, until Campbell can figure it out, get healthy again, and get back into this lineup. If I look at it and I say Joseph Wall and Peter Mrazek are fairly equivalent players in terms of what they've done with the Leafs this season, which I do genuinely think that they are, especially mm -hmm. from their track record this year, just looking at this year, we can't look at the past, like we got to look at right now, then I think if you gain an opportunity to go out and acquire, say, a top four defenseman who can really push your team to the next level, that guy alone, it's not going to be the weight of the world on his shoulders, but that guy alone can bring something to this team, push this team to another level that you might not be able to get to with Peter Mrazek, and he could be a guy to help you get over the hump of when can't to when Campbell comes back. I think that if you hold on to Mrazek, I understand what you're saying in terms of the safety blanket, but playoffs isn't necessarily about safety blankets. This is a throw everything at the wall and God damn it, just go for it situation. Like you gotta put it put your chips in and, and give her on this one. So are you saying though if we shop Mrazic, you think there's a decent chance or you know like realistic potential that we can get back a top four defenseman in a move for him i don't know if it'll be for him but i think it frees the space for it to happen after the okay. fact if it doesn't happen for him yeah that's valid the other that's thing valid. i think I about here is is uh sorry but it's the other thing i think about is 
we talked about the possibility and if you haven't watched the video yet you can go to our channel hit the subscribe button and watch the video about us talking about the possibility of trading Richie and Dermott we know the Leafs have interest in doing that and one of the things and one of the concerns we talked about was that to move on from one of or both of those guys another team may have to look at it and go you got to give us something back to acquire this cap space to take this away from you because every team in the NHL is smart enough to know that Nick Ritchie sitting in the minors still costs 1.375 against the Leafs salary cap taking Ritchie off of our hands they know helps the Leafs so they're gonna look at you and go give us something else to free up that space give us something Peter Mrazek could be that guy and if in a combo move you move Richie and Mrazek and you free up five you're basically freeing up almost six mil of cap space that could be a potential combo there do you not need the salary match I'm aware in the NBA you do but 75 percent salary matches is like also in the NHL and during deals is it not uh I don't think I don't think so no Okay, well, that's surprising. I thought they would have had it, but that was going to be essentially my counter there is, you know, will the salaries balance out? If it's not an issue, then great. Let's dump some salary and find a way to do it. But in the rare case that it does need to be a salary match, which I thought it did, but I guess probably not. I'm just referencing the NBA system. Um, but if it did need to be a salary match, that does put you even farther behind the eight ball in terms of getting a deal done because you're going to need to take back substantial salary, especially if you were to throw them in together. But if that's a non-factor, then I love the idea of dumping salary, but there will be an element of, you know, a team willing to do us a favor and finding that perfect deal. And there's no guarantee of that, but sentimentally I'm with you and it obviously help us out. We got to deal with something with this cap space before trade deadline. Well, the one thing I even look at here is that think about a team like Dallas Klingberg is running out on his deal. He's requested out of Dallas. They're looking to move on from him. Now they're going to want pieces back. They're going to want to try to build for the future. They have a goalie in Jake Ottinger who's coming up and playing, but his backup right now has been uh, has been Holtby. Well, Holtby's older guy. He's not the top tier of what he was. He's I think he's a UFA at the end of the season on a one-year deal. They could potentially look at a guy like Mrazic and go, okay, you're here this year and the next two years, we can start to turn some things around you with you and maybe rebuild on the fly. We get rid of Klingberg, but we acquire pieces back that help us moving forward. There's a lot of times where deals like that go down, where teams take a guy off another team's hands in order to help them get to the next level. And if you can move Mrazic, maybe you move on from Richie and you figure out a way to fit that salary space in and acquire a guy like that back. Now, by no means, like, don't don't do not nobody out there radio me on this one and say he said this would happen <laughs> i'm just kind of throwing it out there as a hypothetical example of a situation where that could happen is you look at a team like that and they go okay maybe maybe we get a piece back that helps us for the future maybe we throw Mirazik in that deal next year we're looking at we move on from holpi Mirazik backs up oninger we have a situation where we can rebuild on the fly. They still have Ben. They still have Sagan. They've got these rookies coming up. It could help them turn things around too. We acquire Klingberg, obviously a UFA, which, I mean, who knows what the heck happens after the season with UFAs in Toronto. They have left every year after the deadline. But uh, it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, there is possibilities out there where we could move a guy like this, get a team to eat some cap, and get a piece in return. Maybe it isn't a Klingberg, but maybe it's a guy who helps. Maybe it's a guy who finally fits into the six and pushes Hall out, and Sandine and Lilligren move up, and they have a better pairing. Like There are pieces like that that are so, so valuable to what this team could do moving forward, and that cap space is a big restricting fra factor at this point in time. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, you find that right deal and I'm all for it. And I like the way you're talking about the, uh, I guess, the the mutual benefits of doing a deal with Dallas because I actually could see that. They're going to try to bring up the young goaltender. They're going to need someone solid to play behind him. Holtby going into free agency a little bit older. I actually really could see that. I like the idea of it, but I still think if you were to do a deal like that, they'd want one young piece back, not necessarily like a top level performer, but maybe like a Lilligren. And at that point, you know, you, you ship off Lilligren. Uh, along with Peter Mrazek to get back Klingberg. I actually still think that's a decent deal. I don't know about you. Of course, I'm going to be completely honest. I think that's too expensive for, for Klingberg I'm, on a rental deal. I just feel like Klingberg's decent enough that they'll have other offers around the league, like Dallas will, to move him and get back a young piece. And I mean, as much as Peter Mrazek will be a, like a key to helping develop their one goalie now, and just, I mean, a safety blanket, maybe he'll turn around and become the starter. Like, there's really no... Uh, predicting that but I do think that they'd see some value in it for sure I just think that a young piece being offered 
by a contender is probably a little bit more alluring to them. I think Sharana will need to sweeten up the pot because Peter Mrazek's like a lottery ticket that'll cost you for three years. So, and if it works out, you look like a genius, but if not, I mean, you strap a young team for a fair bit of cap space with this contract. I think you'll need to juice it up a bit, but that's my own personal opinion. I hope, I definitely hope not. And I love Lilligren, but, um, you know what? Maybe it still would be worth it to really round out the blue line before playoffs. But I'm not sold on anything yet. It'll be interesting to hear his rumors advance. Yeah, completely. Honestly, I just think it's too much. I even look at like a Felino trade last year or when we went out and acquired David Riddick. The pieces that went the other ways was way in both those deals were just picks. It was strictly picks that were moving around. A lot of the deals that have been made at deadlines, especially for guys who are going to become UFAs, guys that are on rentals, it hasn't necessarily been players moving back the other way you look at even what happened in that trade with buffalo like the moving the other way was alex tuck who's obviously a servo serviceable player and peyton krebs who is a up-and-coming prospect guy who's going to be playing games for buffalo and could be a big piece for them but jack eichel is a a superstar tier ahead of what Peter Mrazek is, and B, he has much more term on his deal than Peter Mrazek, as well as salary. So it's a much more costly deal. I look at this one and I see Mrazek. I think that that is, hey, maybe it's not the ideal in one, and maybe Dallas isn't that suitor. Maybe there's other teams out there, but Mrazek going one way is a big piece for a team. It is a guy who is a legit goaltender, is a serviceable goaltender, a well-known goaltender who's not that old. And after this season, you're only looking at two years left. And I have not actually checked. I probably should have. But the Leafs typically front load salary so that they pay the salary cap of the player so that later on, the team that's acquiring them doesn't have to pay them the money themselves. They strictly just acquired the cap hit. And, and what I mean by that is like the money coming out of the team's pocket would not be $3.8 million. It would be somewhere around $1.2, let's say. And the rest would be in signing bonuses that the Leafs have probably already paid for. I just can't see a situation where a guy like Lilligren would have to hop into that deal. I could see maybe you're right a pick, but I can't see it being a player, especially not a guy in this lineup right now. Maybe even a Marley's player. Who knows? But not a guy in this lineup right now. And Lilligren is a guy fitting into this top six right now. Yeah, and getting rid of young, talented defensemen I don't think is really at the top of the Leafs' to-do list, but I just yeah. feel like there might be a little bit more of a price there for a Klingberg. You bring up some good points. I mean, the Leafs don't have an overwhelming amount of picks. Um, you know, Nick Robertson, that's a name that'll definitely be flying around as the Leafs get some updates on the trade block because he's yeah. a guy that could literally go out and become a, a top-line player at some point comfortably in his career. I mean, that's a ceiling, but it's definitely still possible for him, and he's really gotten robbed of playing time and opportunity in Toronto, some injuries coming in. We'll keep an eye on those names, definitely. And um, I mean, the easier the deal to get done, of course, the more pleased I am. But I just it'll be really interesting to see what kind of offers Dallas gets on the table. But I do, for the reasons that you outlined, see them as a pretty decent trade partner for a team like the Leafs. Yeah, and I even look at, like, uh, I know the Leafs have kicked tires on Jacob Chikorin. Uh, maybe yeah. there's a move there where you could go and kick Morasic down to Arizona. He plays there. They'll eat some of that salary cap. They're still a terrible team that's intentionally being terrible. They're going to try for that. You can move them pieces. Maybe that's when you move a guy like Robertson down to Arizona, and they're looking for pieces moving the other way, but you get a guy like Jacob Chikorin to fit into this lineup. There is a lot of possibility, but I think that the opportunity to free up $3.8 million of cap space is something that is very, very, very valuable right now. And this Leafs management should be taking every opportunity they can to look into it, to figure out if it's the right fit. Because I do think internally we have some guys who could come up and play, step into those roles. I think Wall could do it as a backup goaltender, knowing he's a guy who's just going to have to go in there and play a little bit down the stretch here to just help support Campbell. I think that that would work out. And I think just ultimately moving on from $3.8 million would be a huge thing. This is a big experiment, a big call cost and it hasn't necessarily worked out the best so far bill and you just you brought up arizona this is so random and like totally a segue from what we're talking about i doubt anything would happen this year but maybe a player that i've always felt like i get certain feelings about guys and i'm like i could see him playing there and, and you know sometimes it ends up happening i feel like one day the leafs will end up with Lawson and kraus on the roster i don't know why I mean, I think they need guys with that sort of skill set in their bottom six, even though we figured out the bottom six. So I'm not saying it's like a dire need right now, but I just got to say this right now so that when it happens, we can clip this and post it. But <laughs> loss and crowds to the Leafs one day. Book it. 
fair enough. Well, Leafs fans, let us know in the comments below if you think the Leafs should move on from Razik. Also, what do you think we could get back for him? I'm curious to think what people think that return would be. Would this strictly be a salary dump? Would we be able to get something back in return? Let us know. Make sure you like this video and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 2,000 subscribers, absolutely battling our way there. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Help the boys get there. Leafs fans, it's going to be an interesting one, especially as we come closer to the trade deadline. More teams start kicking around. More uh, news and rumors start flying out. We'll be breaking it all down on this channel. So Leafs fans, things are exciting as we go. We will see you guys tomorrow after tomorrow night's game. Leafs fans, keep believing. Signing off.